Hello friends, welcome. Welcome to the system design interview questions and software architect question by Knowledge Powerhouse. Let's go on to our next question. Question is, what are the situations in which Cassandra is useful? So in this topic, uh, we'll try to cover some things about Cassandra, what are the special things about Cassandra, and especially in data engineering world, Cassandra is very popular. Nowadays, even in system design, we use Cassandra in some instances. So we need to understand what are those instances. So Cassandra is a distributed database management system. So it's a NoSQL database and, and it's a distributed with like, you know, highly scalable system. And there is no single point of failure. So that is one of the biggest benefit of using Cassandra that there's no single point of failure. Normally in other databases, there are some master nodes that can fail, whereas in Cassandra, even if a master node fails, they can elect a new leader out of other nodes. And on the other hand, it is a highly performant system and it supports linear scalability. So that way, like it's a, it provides a very high performance with linear scalability. What do you mean by linear scalability? It means if we increase the specific amount of input and the increase in output will be in the same proportion. Like in Cassandra, if you need more throughput, then you just need to add more servers of same kind. And there's no need to add more servers for managing the, those servers, right? So management overhead from the servers is very less. It's more like a democratic protocol. You need more servers, they will provide you more scalability in same proportion. You don't need to increase managing, managing servers or master servers in case of Cassandra. Among those nodes itself, some node will select and make it as a leader node, right? So which is a linear scalability. With a high scale and performance, Cassandra is very useful for NoSQL database requirements. Like in NoSQL, we have a large amount of data, especially in big data use cases. And here the demand will keep increasing or decreasing drastically. And in such a case, you need to suddenly add maybe 500 more servers, five like you know, 1000 more servers. So Cassandra is like, uh, able to add all these nodes very fast and this is also known as elastic scalability which means that you can scale up or scale down very easily with cassandra and then comes another point like why cassandra gets more popular is that since there is no single point of failure the processes in cassandra can keep running as perpetually which means like without any downtime cassandra will be used as a backend and to keep running the processes and like there's no single point of failure so even if like one or two nodes are up your system is up so that way you get a very high throughput and like tp99 kind of a performance from cassandra now because of that we come back to the cap theorem so there's a video we had on cap theorem uh, regarding consistency availability and partition tolerance so cassandra provides uh, availability and partition tolerance. It supports AP. It provides high availability and partition tolerance in a distributed system. And the consistency part is tunable. So you can have a strong consistency, but not like, you know, a very high consistency and then availability may get reduced. So often we set up Cassandra as a eventually consistent database. And in eventually consistent also, you have a tunable consistency means you can increase or decrease that consistency. Now, from architecture perspective, Apache Cassandra follows the base model, which is like basically available, soft state, eventually consistent base model, instead of ACID model for database properties, right? So ACID model is used generally in RDBMS and base model is used in NoSQL. So Cassandra generally follows the base model. Now, from communication perspective, Cassandra uses a protocol called Gossip Protocol. Right. As per this protocol, nodes can choose among themselves the other nodes from which they will exchange their state. And the nodes can start exchanging this information by using the gossip protocol so they quickly learn about each other node in the cluster. So there's no need to manage it like explicitly. The nodes themselves choose how they want to communicate. In general, in social media applications like Facebook, Twitter, etc., Cassandra is very popular and it's quite useful in those scenarios. So even in your use case, if you have like a large amount of data with variable scale, you can use Cassandra for perpetual running of your processes. 
All right, that's all on the topic of Cassandra. If you have any other questions, do post in the comment section and give us a feedback on this. We'll be happy to answer your future questions on this topic. Thank you and have a great day.